Do you battle imposter syndrome? Have you been told to stand up and say, you are enough, you are enough, you are enough. That's the world's answer. But you and I both know that our souls just don't feel right with that because it doesn't go far enough. It doesn't take us back to the truth of who God is because we're not enough without him. This is going to bless your socks off today. This was a piece of a presentation that I did live at an event recently. I can't wait for you to dive in and hear how to overcome the imposter syndrome with the truth of God's word for the Christian in business. Buckle your seatbelt and enjoy. How do I become pink? And what does pink mean? We're going to talk through three steps of being a pink business owner. And again, I've got my notes here. You can take notes this morning in your notebook or in whatever you've got handy. There are no handouts for this session. So just grab a pen and something you're going to want to probably take some notes here. Three steps to being a pink business owner. When I say pink, what I mean is obviously not the color. It's more the symbolism. When I say pink, I'm thinking the flamingo business owner. And what does it mean to be a flamingo business owner? Owner. A flamingo business owner is one who embraces how unique God made them. They embrace the quirk. They embrace the natural giftings and the talents. They're not afraid to just stand firm and be who they are where God has put them to serve. When I think about going to see those flamingos in that river in the wild, they weren't scared of the tourists coming up in the boat. They weren't scared of the crocodiles in the river several hundred yards away. They were completely confident that they were exactly where they needed to be and nothing was going to move them. Like we got within a few feet of them. They didn't even ruffle their feathers at us. They just were confident to be there and do what God had created them to do. And so how do we do that as business owners? How do we embrace our bold colors that God has put in us and not let it bother us that we might stand out in an atmosphere where pink looks weird against blue and green. And you think about, you know, the flamingos, how much time do they sit there and spend worrying about, oh my goodness, are they going to look at me and criticize me for being pink today? No. That's just who they are. And so all of us who put so much time and effort into worrying about what other people are going to think need to spend that time and replace it with thinking about what is God going to think? How do I glorify my God today with how he made me and where he's put me? And so three steps to becoming a pink business owner. Step number one is to accept imposter syndrome. And some of you are going to look at me like I got three eyes right now, right? What do you mean accept imposter syndrome? Well, here's what I believe other people out there say that you need to fight imposter syndrome. That when you get that feeling in there that that maybe you're not good enough, or maybe you shouldn't be doing this. You Anybody have, ever had those kind of thoughts, right? The world calls it imposter syndrome, and they want to fill you up with all of the worldly self-talk that says, no, you are good enough. You are enough. You can do this. And to some extent, that is true, but they don't take it all the way to the root. The truth is you are enough only because God is enough, and he's promised to do this through you. The truth is you can do this because he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And so we have to take it a step further than the world does, that imposter syndrome is that reminder that you need God today. That feeling of uneasiness is that I can't do this all on my own. I need help. And that's a good thing. Don't fight it. Embrace it. Accept it as your reminder that this is a process. And I get to be here and do this today. I get to practice who I am becoming because God is glorified as I do this. There is no shame in practicing what you are becoming. Flamingo babies, when they're born, are not pink all the way through. Their skin and their flesh and their blood is pink. But their feathers, when they're first born, are not colored yet. They're white, then they turn a little bit gray. And the reason for that, the fact that they're white doesn't mean they're not flamingo. We wouldn't look at a baby flamingo and be like, oh, you imposter, how dare you think you're a flamingo? Because it's not the pink that we always think of a flamingo being. But the flamingo baby is practicing who they will become. They don't get their full color until they mature, until they have enough nutrients to give them that color, until they have enough practice to be able to grow their strength, grow the strength of their wings, grow the strength of their legs, grow the nutrients in them. They get their color from the nutrients. And so as they mature and do flamingo things, they become pink. Does that make sense? So they get that pretty color by maturity 
by practicing being a flamingo. So here's a picture for you guys, the baby flamingos in their, in their whiteness here, and then they turn gray. Look at the difference between them and the adult in the color. And yet none of us stand here and point fingers. How dare you think you're a flamingo? We know it's a part of the process. And yet we do that with one another and with ourselves. How dare you think you're a business owner? Who do you think you are to be out there trying to tell people you can help them with this? Who gave you the title of whatever it is? We have those thoughts in our heads. There is no shame in practicing who you are becoming. You need to accept that imposter syndrome as the reminder that you get to practice who you're becoming. This is a process of God growing into who he wants you to be. And so that enemy trying to convince you that you're not what he is becoming you into the fact is you just haven't matured yet. You haven't practiced it enough. You haven't had enough nutrients to be fully pink and bold in your color yet. When my children say, mom, I don't know how to do that. I say, yet. You don't know how to do that yet because you can always learn. You can always mature. You can always improve. And so when you have those thoughts, who am I to think that I could market this thing? Well, I'll tell you who you are. You're a CEO in training. You're a marketer in training. You're the CEO of this business. God didn't make a mistake when he put you in charge of this because he doesn't make mistakes. It's your job to learn how to market better because that's the job of a CEO or to delegate that to someone who can do it better than you. Again, because you're the CEO. Who am I to think that I could charge this? for my services. Well, I'll tell you who you are. You're the specialist in your niche. You're the one who's had all this education and all this experience. You're the one with a unique perspective that can help people. You're the one with a unique way of communicating. You're the one that can reach them in their specific learning style or their specific love language and get through to them with this thing that can change their life. That's who you are. You don't charge for the minutes you spend with them. You charge for the lifetime of preparation and the specialty of your knowledge that God has put into you. Who am I to think that I could influence? Well, I'll tell you, <laughs> you're a child of the king. You are an ambassador of the one who owns it all. That's who you are. Your position in Christ not only comes with a title, it comes with a responsibility to represent him well to the people that you influence. And no matter who you are today or what your sphere of influence happens to be, there is someone you are influencing. There are people that you touch that nobody else touches in just the same way. And you have not only the right and the privilege of that title, you also have the responsibility to represent Christ well to those people. We do it in the name of the King. Who am I to think that I could invest this or that I could spend this? Well, again, child of the King, he owns it all, remember? Christ is no obstacle for God. Lord, if you want me to do this, show me how you're going to provide because you've promised that you will provide all of my needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And so if this is really where you want me to go, show me how you're going to pay for it. Child of the King, all that he owns is at your disposal if he should choose for you to go that way. Everything he owns is at your disposal. I get to practice stewarding this business. You get to practice stewarding your business. You get to practice this service. You get to keep filling yourself up. I want to say nutrifying, but I don't think that's the right word. Getting those nutrients, feeding yourself on that diet of the truth of God's word so that your color can be more bold, so that your confidence can be more bold, so that you have greater wisdom that you can apply to the things that God has called you to do. You are practicing to be that person that you are becoming. And the more I practice, the better I get. Concert pianists didn't get there with two hours of practice. It takes hours, daily practice, time investment if you want to get better. We don't criticize someone who's practicing to be a concert pianist. How dare you have that goal? Nobody does that. Nobody criticizes a child who's playing mommy to her baby doll. She's practicing for who she's becoming. And so we also need to give ourselves more grace when we feel that who am I to think come up. When we feel that inside of us, that you're not good enough to recognize that as a sign of the process, commit yourself back to the truth of whose you are and who called you to do this and all that is at your disposal to use for his purposes in your life and your business. You are practicing for who you are becoming. And so I, I don't do in order to get or in order to earn. 
That's a big thing I wanted to point out here too. Like a lot of us feel like we're imposters because our motivation is off. Our alignment is off. Sometimes it comes from those outside voices criticizing, but sometimes it can come because our own motivation or our alignment is off. If I'm doing to earn God's favor, my alignment is off. If I'm doing to get money because I'm thinking that my clients or my customers pay my bills, my alignment is off. I have to base myself. I have to ground myself in the truth of who my provider is. And my provider is not my clients and customers. My provider is my God and the owner of this business. And so the imposter feelings can come from those outside criticisms, those outside voices, but it could also come because my motivation is misaligned. And if that is where this is coming from, then I've got to go back to the truth again. Who is my God? Does he own it all? Has he promised to provide for me? Did he call me to this? Did he promise he would do through me what he's called me to do? And I have to get back into alignment. I don't do to earn. I do out of gratitude for what has already been given. I loved when Jamie said, I let go of the results and I just determined I was going to be grateful for whatever happened. Anything we get in this life is extra. The fact that you woke up breathing today is extra. God doesn't owe you that. None of us deserve it. And so I can be grateful for whatever God decides to do because I know I've been faithful to do what I've been called to do. My part is the process. His part is the result. And so to become that pink business owner, I've got to accept and embrace the imposter syndrome because that's that immediate symbol, that immediate red flag, the immediate reminder that I need my God today, that he's the one who does this work. If you enjoyed that, my friend, that is just part one of a three-part series that we would love to send to you. Click the link. You'll be able to opt in for free to get the rest of the series. And you'll also be invited to our free group for Christian business owners. We would love to have you in our community, a safe place, a sanctuary for Flamingo business owners like you, learning how to be bold in who God made us and how we're supposed to show up and serve the world. I hope to see you on the inside.